Now, I wrote a column a few months back on 128 things that are going to disappear in the driverless car era. It's quite startling, all the things that change with that. Now, Elon Musk says that he's going to have a car that drives from Los Angeles to New York with no human intervention before the end of this year. He said that last year, too, so we'll have to see if it comes true this year. If you've never driven in a driverless car, this is what it's like. So pay close attention to the, the guy the, behind the steering wheel, the, the nervous guy with his hands on his lap. <laughs> so this brings up a, a critical point because there's a trust factor that goes along with this. It's going to take a while before we actually trust this technology. Car loans are going to start disappearing. Now, this is going to take a couple decades for this to unfold, but as we can summon a vehicle and it shows up whenever we need it, we no longer have to own our own vehicle. So the car loan industry is start going to uh, go downhill. Now, there's lots of changes that come about as a result of this. Because 86% of the cars on the road just have one person in them, very likely we're going to start seeing driverless cars designed for just one person. If you need a two-person one or a five-person one, you can just summon those vehicles, but most of them will just be one person. And as parking lots start to disappear, we're going to start designing buildings with queuing stations in front. Uh, electric cars are going to dominate. The life expectancy of a car is going to be less than a year. As you're picking people up and dropping them off, 24 hours, seven days a week, we suddenly we start wearing that car out very quick. We could get 1,000 miles on in a single day. That means after 10 months, we've got 300,000 miles on that car. It affects lots of things. 41% of the revenue that comes to airports comes from parking and transportation services. A lot of things start disappearing then. And there's lots of consequences of distracted driving. 38,000 deaths a year, 4.4 million injuries, and we're spending right at half a trillion dollars a year fixing people after car injuries. A half a trillion dollars a year, that's one out of six dollars in the healthcare industry disappears. Nobody's sorry to see that go, but it's a huge impact on society. Lots of money disappears from sales tax. This is going to have a huge effect on cities. Over 10% of retail starts to disappear. New York City brought in $1.9 billion for traffic violations in 2015. All that starts to disappear. There's a whole lot of bad karma in this number, let me tell you. Cities are going to lose over 50% of their revenue streams. So teenagers are going to be some of the early adopters. Parents are actually going to prefer it, but with teenagers, things go wrong. I mean, how can anything go wrong with teenagers? <laughs> At what age is it okay to put a child in a driverless car by themselves to go to school? If we design a car that recognizes a parent on one end, a teacher on the other end, is it okay to put a, a five or six year old kid in a car by themselves to go to school and then for how long? Is 10 minutes okay? Is a half hour too long? We've not had any of these discussions yet. This is all new public policy that we'll have to implement. So as the driverless world starts unfolding, this opens the door for lots of mobile businesses. It's interesting, the history of the shop, shopping mall in the United States, the first one was in 2056. The very last shopping mall was built in 2006. Um, we've not built any more since then. E-commerce is going up like a, a rocket and department stores are declining. Is this a retail apocalypse? And what comes next? Well, what I see coming next is driverless mobile businesses. We can have fully automated convenience stores that'll come to you. Every softball tournament that sets up, we have mobile convenience stores that come there and set up. Mobile hair shops, mobile dog grooming places, mobile banks. Mobile banks are gonna come in lots of different forms. We already have banking deserts in different places of the country. This is kind of a hybrid model that can service large areas. We have mobile bike repair, bike rental places, mobile hair salons and nails and coffee shops, retail stores. These are gonna come in lots of different forms. If you could buy a pie from the pie minister, would you do that? Mobile vending machines. 
I like this idea of mobile hotel rooms. You're going to have a big convention. You can just summon another 500 rooms to come in to your city. Or you can, these could actually be hospital rooms, too, if you have a major accident. The mall of the future I see as a giant warehouse, and every morning mobile businesses come pull in there and set up and do business. A different experience every day. The mobile food truck industry is paving the way for a much more interesting retail experience. The thing that's missing is what I call a GeoSmart cash register because nobody knows what the right taxes are at any location in the country. So technology is the great complexity enabler. So if we create this GeoSmart cash register, it knows exactly where it's at at any time and charges the exact amount of money and then remits micropayments some blockchain-based payment system that goes out to each of the taxing authorities with every single transaction. Drone taxis are going to be very popular starting very soon. They're already offering service in China. This is what's coming. I don't know about you, but I think I want two of them. <laughs> Driverless technology is going to be the most disruptive technology in all history. And there's a number of reasons why that's, that's true. We're going to have driverless delivery services that crop up, mobile retail storefronts, medical services, gaming salons, and much more. Isn't that just an intimidating looking truck coming at you? This is what an intersection will look like in the driverless era. It's kind of the way India looks right now, but. <laughs>